This is KC24 News, Decision 2020, your local election headquarters. And we're taking a look at the results in the Fresno mayoral campaign. Um, we saw this a little bit earlier and we had some of the precincts and now it's showing these may be uh, absentee results or early results, but yeah. Jerry Dyer with a, a really strong lead at this point over Andrew Jams. Yeah, our analyst Larry Powell joining us back here on set and Larry, uh, you're looking at these original numbers before we uh, left to take a quick break. Uh, obviously, I didn't want to put words in your mouth, <laughs> but you had told me uh, before we went on that you thought it would look like this. Well, and if you'll take a look at District 6 and District 4, the city council races, mm -hmm. you'll see the turnout is so much bigger in District 6, which is Bredefeld, mm -hmm. than in Dist District 4 where the two candidates are running. Mm -hmm. So that turnout is going to drive it, and the North votes for Jerry Dyer. And there is Here's the district a, yeah. that you're talking about, yeah, Alonzo and Maxwell. Yep. Yeah, you're looking at uh, some interesting numbers. Uh, their total turnout is 15% in District 4. District 6 turnout is 25%. 10% hmm. more turnout in a Jerry Dyer stronghold. Okay. So well, that gives you a little bit of what, an idea. Why, why do you think um, Jerry Dyer, I mean, he obviously has the name recognition, but so did Andrew Jams from previous campaign again def it, against I don't Devin think Nunes. it translated from the congressional race to a mayor race uh, congressional you don't have to be uh, an individual CEO leader type mm -hmm. uh, you're part of a group mayor you're the guy uh, Jerry Dyer demonstrated leadership like it or not you know leadership uh, as a he did manage chief. A, lo a lot managed of people a lot of people and a big and, budget and a big budget yeah. and you did have not seen that with Jan's you know, so. let's get to this because we've been talking about it all day. We were talking about the fact that there were these voting centers and w it's the Voters' Choice Act that right. we implemented this time around mm -hmm. so California could be in the Super Tuesday uh, format. But the voting centers went down for a, a period. They went dark. Andrew Jans was calling on Brandy Orth, the Fresno County Clerk's mm -hmm. uh, office registrar, to, to extend it an hour. Uh, she said that that's not in my pay grade, so to speak. <laughs> well, is he? Will yeah. this be something he challenges exactly. after you know, as the votes are continued to be I, counted? I don't think there's enough to challenge it. Yeah. that's that's the thing. We've had the ballots in our hands for 30 days or more, so yeah. mm -hmm. uh, I don't see anything that would actually lead to a legal challenge. But lawyers like to look for those kinds of things to see if they can do something like that I don't think you're gonna see it it's not significant enough you know yeah well I think we're gonna move on to a congressional or the congressional race district 16 uh, Jim Costa the incumbent and this is a pretty uh, interesting result the Republican Kevin Cookingham with 46 percent of the votes and it's the top two vote getters in this race that will move on into November. Do you think Jim Costa is perhaps surprised by this or what are, what are your thoughts, Larry? Uh, I don't think much surprises him. Uh, add the 11 and the 38 and you got 49. Mm -hmm. uh, so you always have to look at the total vote in each of the, the areas. So right, the, the two Democrats. Yeah. You have to look at it that way. True. Strong, strong showing for Cookingham, though, which is really, uh, you know, kind of unusual. But at the same time, when you add the numbers together, you always have to do that. You you can't just look at one individual right. number. And it's we don't know them. we don't know what votes have been counted That's from correct. what area. So right. things That's can correct. change, of course. Yeah, we yeah. have Fresno County, Madera, and obviously Merced yes. in the congressional race. You know, Esmeralda Soria, the Fresno City Council member, she wanted to jump in this race. She endorsed Costa in the past. Yep. He used that against her in his ads. But Esmeralda Soria, this is not the showing that so far, so far as we look, this is not the showing that she was expecting. Um, but did she do enough? We didn't see a whole lot of attack ads on Costa at all. You know, it's tough to run against a, an incumbent to begin with. Mm -hmm. uh, you d and when you're running, on the, the incumbent is from the same party, it's even harder. Right. Uh, because Costa has delivered, mm -hmm. as she mentioned in some of the ads that she supported <laughs> in her a past couple words. years ago. True. He's brought money to the Valley. Jim Costa kind of runs behind the scenes on a lot of things he does he doesn't 
uh, initiate legislation, but he fights for the valley in a certain way. And folks have kind of liked that. He's also a moderate. He's probably the most moderate Democrat in the valley. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think that people reward him for that. Well, she clearly has uh, you know, goals beyond serving within the city of Fresno. Yes. So we may see her name again on another ballot. Wouldn't surprise in the me, but city council doesn't translate well to statewide and national races yeah. unless you've done a lot of work in advance. Uh, I think this was a first time in. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. Uh, now she knows what she has to work on. Yeah. I want to move to uh, Prop 13. This has been a very controversial bond measure uh, statewide, and so far this is no 60 to 40. And really, this is about the infrastructure of schools throughout the state, a $15 billion construction and modernization of public education facilities. Again, only 4% is in. But this is a strong showing for no, because there's so many local bond measures. Yeah, to be looking do you think at. voters yeah. thought like, well, I'm considering the local measures right. for the local schools, and then there's this one too. It's a lot of I think money. It's tough to vote for both kinds of bonds, even yeah. though the public doesn't understand if a local bond passes, as soon as yours passes, you get in line for state money. Okay, mm -hmm. the fact that you have a bond that is passed lines you up for state money. Like matching funds? Yes, and so not necessarily full matching funds, but uh -huh. percentages. Yeah. Is that what Prop 13 would yes. have funded? Yes, so it gives you additional money for projects that you'd like to do. So it's a hard sell, though, because I'm going to vote for my local district, maybe, mm -hmm. but it means I also have to vote for a statewide bond. When you look at tax rates in California, already as high as any place in America. Yes. And you, that's you, what's hard. Do you think it was bad timing to introduce that proposition? I never like to run both of those at the same yeah. time, but the governor, yeah. Governor Newsom, that, that, or, that was what he was after. He wanted, yeah. this was his big thing for this ballot. Yeah. And Prop 6, you know, something that we saw in the last election cycle about the gas tax, they were trying to repeal that. <laughs> Nobody really understood what it meant on the ballot. Was this kind of the same thing? What What is this actually saying? This actually dived into the housing yes. and the mortgage rates, and <laughs> this is this is very well, take a look at our turnout convoluted. You know, in those two districts that I talked about in the city mm -hmm. council, mm -hmm. that'll give you a good sense of 15 and 25 percent in each of those areas. More conservative voters, yes, are all that are voting. You've got 85 percent and 75 percent that don't care, are mm -hmm. not voting. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not an issue that drives the energy. Uh, and especially before the uh, in a primary election before the general mm -hmm. election in November. Mm -hmm. So it's real hard to energize people in March. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, at least I think being a part of Super Tuesday today yeah. did energize voters some. in California. We're having fun. I know that. <laughs> uh, um, take a look yeah. at the election results uh, last time in June of the same election yep. in the primary. Yep. And you'll see the turnout last time I think will be heavier. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Well, yeah. We want to look at this. Yeah, presidential numbers. Are these national numbers that we're looking at or statewide? These are state numbers. State okay. numbers, 6%. And, and NBC has already declared or projected Correct. Bernie Sanders the, the winner in the state, and you can see he's ahead. Right. But 7%, I think the one thing I want to look at there is Mike Bloomberg is somewhat trending. I mean, obviously, it'll be a lot different. There's a lot more yes. people in California than that. And he did spend a lot of money <laughs> he did. advertising here. Especially here in the Central Valley. I know that he spent his campaign more than half a billion dollars. But, Larry, you look at the state of California. Yep. Bernie Sanders uh, seems to be resonating. It's progressive. Um, does Progressive that and young. Yeah. Progressive and young. Does that help them, though, when it comes time to get into the Democratic convention? I, I don't think it does translate the way he would like it to translate. Mm -hmm. I am heartened by one of the things you see here, that a billionaire can't buy that many votes. Yeah. You know? Well, so, <laughs> well, he's yeah. not done, though. He's, he's not, not done, but not the, done. the money hasn't translated. If you take a look at this, 19% of the vote yeah. spending, and California is where he spent most of his money. Yeah. Yeah. This was the one he wanted to try to do something with. But I will give him credit. Yeah, he's one out of five of those who did vote. For, so For folks that did vote early here in, in our area, Right. in the state, some of them, their votes really don't count. They, it, had they chosen one of the candidates that dropped out. That's Do you correct. think those candidates maybe should have waited <laughs> until after Super Tuesday? It's a catch-22. 
Uh, if I wait and drop out afterwards, uh, I've I disheartened a lot of people. Yeah, that's you know? true. So if I drop out early, at least I got a chance for them, some people to shift their votes. True. That's, that's the, the catch-22 of it. I wish if you were not going to, to run in California's Super Tuesday, you should be thinking about that about 15 days in advance. Yeah. Because most votes tend to come in the last 15 days. Well, mm, maybe the next four years from now, things will be different yeah. after they've had a chance to digest what you happened. Know, politics continue pretty much unabated. They yes, they do. Very <laughs> similar I things. feel like we were just in the 2016 presidential yeah. election, and here we go <laughs> it again. It doesn't seem that long. No. Yeah, exactly. Larry, we want to thank you for spending some time with us here on yourcentralvalley.com. Appreciate Happy your time. Happy to be with you. It's right. a joy. Of course, we'll have much more at 11 o'clock. All the results coming in. We will see you on KC24 News. All the updated results continuous on your centralvalley.com. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.